What do you get when you blend with a reserve? Wheat, bourbon, malt, and rye whiskeys? Let's find out. Guys, welcome to Whiskey and Woodature. I'm your host, Captain Mike. And tonight is the Woodford Reserve Toasted Oak Four Grain Whiskey from their Master Distiller series. Scott and I went to Kentucky October in 2023. We did a tasting, not the tour, at Woodford Reserve and afterwards walk around the gift shop, see if they had any bottles that I didn't have in my house and I didn't see any. And I almost walked out and I came across this Toasted Oak Four Grain Whiskey and I was pretty excited. And if I was a collector and not a drinker, I would have bought two bottles because this is the first Woodford Reserve that has their new Master Distillers signature on it, Elizabeth McCall. Congratulations to you. I think in February of 2023, she became their new Master Distiller. And this, this whiskey is a perfect example of why I like to go to distilleries. I've done a number of tours now, not a bunch, but I don't know, some. And I do like to go to tours simply because I like to see what do they have there that I can't find anywhere else. I've gotten things at Jack Daniels, Kentucky Peerless, Stranahan's, Woodford Reserve, and Jim Beam. Bottles that are distillery only. And I think that's pretty cool. I like to see kind of what they're doing that's new and different, maybe experimental, either to see if something needs to be released, shelf stable product, or if they're just kind of playing around and giving those who take the time to come and do tours and tastings something kind of special. I think that's great. I've really enjoyed the distillery only series that I've had. That Jack Daniels was a pretty great rye. I, I really enjoyed that one. Those Stranahan's were good. Of course, that P Kentucky Peerless uh, absinthe finished rye was, yeah, I think that's a great whiskey. But let's get to the specs and stats of this toasted oak four grain with reserve and then get it. Again, this is a blend of their four, if you will, shelf stable uh, expressions, bourbon, malt, wheat, and rye straight whiskeys. Undisclosed proportions of each in the blend, non-age stated. We know it's at least four years old. They don't tell us how long it's finished in, I've read, heavily toasted, lightly charred barrels. It's bottled at the usual Wolf Reserve, 90.4 proof. I paid $59.99 for this 375 mil bottle. And I do believe it's distillery only when they had it. I'm sure they don't have any more, don't know. It was only at the distillery and at select Kentucky stores. I've been meaning to do this video to open this, well, since I got it. I mean, I got it plenty to open it and drink it. I just been pretty busy with everything and haven't gotten around to it, but I am smoking excited right now. You can see I've had a pour of all the four uh, Woofy Reserve products tonight. We were watching a show in the front room grabbed all these bottles, did a nice little pour of all these. Mrs. Captain and I shared and discussed the four different Woofer Reserve products and just to kind of refresh all that in my mind before I had the four grain. And interestingly enough, I believe it is the wheat whiskey, their shelf stable wheat straight whiskey is also a four grain whiskey. Okay, and right off the bat, just having this around my nose here, I can smell it already, I can tell it's a bright, lively nose. There's a lot of flavors. I haven't even really, but I can just, sometimes I'm like, I can hardly smell anything, but this one I can, uh, it is very present. So with a reserve, their rye and their wheat and their malt, if you will, those are barely legal Kentucky style rye, malt, and wheat whiskeys. It's not like a High West or Penelope or a Smoke Wagon, these MGP based, or these really heavily, like say Bullet uh, 95.5 rye. These are 51, 52, 53, right in there. That is the main component, and then is a huge amount of corn and other grains in there. So in all of these whiskeys, there is quite a bit of corn. So I think if you take a, if you have like an infinity bottle 
and you blend a bunch of whiskeys together, which I haven't done, but I've read about guys who've done that. So if you've done that, let me know. I mean, do you put rye in with your bourbons or do you keep your bourbons separated from your rye? Because I think the rye could possibly just kind of overrun the bourbons if they're a high rye rye, which again, this one's not. So I think they're playing really well in here together. It's, it's so crazy because I just had all of these. I was nosing them and sipping on them, just tasting them a little bit. And I feel like I get all of those notes. Actually, I don't, I'm not getting much rye on the nose. I get that, that high malt. That is a very present on the nose. Maybe some wheat, that sweetness from the wheat. Some definitely some bourbon notes. When I think of Woodford Reserve, I really like their double oak. It's probably my preferred uh, Woodford Reserve product. I love that huge banana note. And I, I think it is a fantastic whiskey. I'm not getting that banana note at all on the nose. Just sweet. I get that maltiness. It's nice. It, I think you could just pick out every one of those components. Just, just a hint of rye in there, but you have some vanilla from the bourbons. You have those, uh, the malt from the malt whiskey. You have that grain, that uh, doughy kind of note from the malt whiskey. It, it's a very nice nose. Cheers. Wow, it's like, again, a little bit of everything. Mrs. Captain gave me one of those two liter whiskey barrels, those home craft things for Christmas this year. And I could see myself taking these four, putting equal portions, proportions into that barrel, letting them sit in there for a few weeks and coming up with this whiskey. I, man, I have some, I didn't get hardly any rice spice on the nose, but I'm definitely getting some rice spice on the palate, but I still have that sweetness from the wheat. I have that doughy, that maltiness, that chocolate a little bit from the malt. It, 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 you can taste all of these whiskeys here at the same time. They're playing really well together. How unique is a four grain whiskey? I was looking at my shelf here, as far as I can tell, I only have two whiskeys that are four grain, a Penelope and the Redwood Empire. And both Penelope and Redwood Empire have uh, multiple bottles that are four grains. So that's great. I do like the Penelope. I like, man, the Redwood Empire bottle and bomb products are fantastic. If you haven't had them, you should try them. I saw on the shelf recently a five grain whiskey I didn't pick that up though. I can't remember what the fifth grain was, but it was not something normal. It was something pretty weird. I had to go look it up. I can't remember what it was, but four grain whiskeys, I don't have very many. At least not that I know of. I'm pretty sure it's just those two. But I think this is excellent. And I've had the Penelope, I'm sorry, I've had the, um, I've had the Ribbon Empire. I've not opened that Penelope barrel strength that I have that is a four grain. It definitely has that malty component, but then there's some of those rye and baking spices. Definitely some cinnamon, a little bit of tingling on the tongue. Again, it's just all playing really well in there. And how about toasted barrels? Do you have many whiskeys that are toasted? How unique is that? Again, I only have, that I'm aware of, two uh, whiskeys at my house right now besides this one that are toasted. Again, the Penelope, I have both a toasted rye and a toasted bourbon. And I just opened a couple nights ago the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. And that is a pretty nice pour. I do believe from the distillery tour that I did that one of those old foresters is toasted as well. But I'm not sure off the top of my head if, if, if that is toasted or not. So not many toasted barrel bottles that I have in my house, certainly not many four grains, um, but 
you know what? It's something I'm gonna look for now. And I think more of the toasted than the four grain. I don't know why, I, I'm not super crazy interested about the four grain, but the toasted, that's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a nice addition, I think, to this bottle. Uh, so my question for you is, do you like toasted whiskeys? Do you look for toasted whiskeys when you go to the store? Do you look for four grains? Is that something that excites you? Or are you just, eh, you don't really care about it? Have you had this, the Whitford Reserve Toasted Oak Four Grain Master Distiller Series? I tell you what, I am gonna look for more whiskeys like this because I think the mouthfeel, the, uh, the finish was just nice and long, a bit more of that sweetness with some hints of spice in there. I think the mouthfeel was great. And I feel bad because when we were at the, the distillery at the store and I was buying this bottle, oh, it's just nice and creamy there. Maybe there was just a hint of banana right there. I don't know. But while we were at the store, Scott was like, hey, he was thinking about buying one too. And I was like, I think he already had kind of his limit, the, the bottles that he was thinking about buying and uh, didn't really push him to buy this one. And that's his choice, of course, but he ended up not buying one. And I'm sorry for that for him. Sorry, Scott, for not telling you to, to go ahead and buy one of these, but I had never had it, so I didn't really know. I think this is, that was a really, really nice pour. I've had some pretty good whiskeys as the year in 2023 finished. And this is one of my first videos for whiskey of 2024. And I wish I had done this sooner. So I think if you, I don't know if you can get this anymore. I would say go out and buy it, but you can't get it at your local store unless you live in Kentucky. And even then, I don't know if it's available. So if you see these anywhere and it's available, I think you should grab one. I think $59.99, it's quite a bit for a 375 milliliter, but um, I think it's worth it. I'm pretty excited to have this and to get further in. And it just strengthens my resolve to do more distillery tours. And when I'm at distilleries, looking for those distillery only products. Guys, it's 11.30 at night, and I was up super late last night. I didn't get to bed till 3.30 this morning. So getting a little tired, time to go to bed. But you know what to do. I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn the pages, my friends, and stay thirsty. Cheers. <music>